You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Ricky Baez once again. Ricky, how are you on this Friday morning? I am doing great, Pete. It is a great week, a great Friday, and uh, well, for some people, not others. Not everyone. Yeah, not everyone. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's um, this is tough. I mean, it, it's 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 the, the the layoffs are. Um, we thought they there was a big wave. When was that? In December, early December, I think. Early December, yeah, hit. around there. Yeah. And I, yeah, we we didn't think it was over necessarily, but it seems to um it seems to be you know lingering. Uh, this week, would we have SAP? Some big names: Quora, IBM, oh. Shutterfly. These are household names that are laying people off, and and that those are the ones we know about. Um, I think it's safe to say that. There's many, many uh, layoffs happening around the country that that aren't publicized. Uh, so it's a tough time right now. It is, and and you know what, Pete, we we got to give ourselves credit here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and pat ourselves on the back because we saw this coming. We talked about this about a year ago. About a year ago, you and I were right here having a conversation about how 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 hard the pendulum is swinging one way as far as recruiters jumping ship and going elsewhere, and how the pendulum was going to stop and come back the other way, and layoff was going to happen, and it's starting to happen. Actually, no, I'll take it back. It started, and it's still going. And like you said, I thought it was going to slow down. It's it seems like that snowball is becoming bigger and bigger by the week, right? Well, you know, is as we've also talked about a lot over the past year, is it's it's hard to know who and what to believe. You know, yeah. is the is the economy doing well? Uh, you know, or or you know, is inflation? You know, is it up? Is it down? Depending on who, which source you listen to. Um, you know, right now we you know, there's you know, there's a shortage of eggs, so I'm gonna say that <laughs> things aren't going great in many respects, right? Um. It's it's almost a strange place to be where you I don't know if you watch the uh, the press conferences or White House press conferences that, that take place almost every day, but they they tell a completely different story than what you yeah. see on social media, what uh, people are experiencing in their personal lives, where they'll say, well, yeah, yeah, things are things are going great in the economy, and then you see that there's you know, pictures of uh, no eggs available at, um, <laughs> at at grocery stores and 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 prices way up, and then. You know the the jobs report. So the numbers look good. Uh, unemployment is is at historical lows at three and a half percent. That's crazy. But yet we see layoffs yeah. daily now. Um, so there's a lot of contradictory messages out there. And I will tell you, being in staffing, uh, I can say that um, that that times are are tight. There's still a lot of companies hiring. That's the good news. Uh, that's the the great news in in this scenario. The tech workers who've been laid off, these people are highly marketable, yep. right? But but mm -hmm. yeah, but I but you know I think there's there's a lot of support staff and other positions that get get you know that are getting hit too, and um, they're the ones that I think are going to have the tougher time you know, finding jobs right now. Correct, and 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 you're right. So those folks, most of them are highly marketable, but I I I don't want to undermine what they're going through because it's still it still is a bad feeling it still is a bad feeling to go into the office thinking you're going to continue or start or finish a project and they're like hey let's have a conversation now i don't know if you've noticed this um i saw online that it's it, uh there were some organizations who kind of missed the mark on how they did it did you read that one of the big organizations um they were supposed to um announce on monday that people were going to be let go but the people who were going to be let go, their information was locked out on Friday. Did you see that? No. Are you talking about Google or a different? A different I thought it was Google. I didn't want to say it, but I thought it was Google because people were trying to log in on Friday. And then they found that a little bit earlier, like before the actual weekend started, that they were going to be laid off. And well, this is not necessarily going to be a popular statement, but uh, it, okay. you know, Google, uh, what I saw was that I didn't see the thing about Friday and Monday. What I saw that um, employees, and I don't think this was, I think this was a week ago mm -hmm. now, um, the Google employees who showed up for work, uh, you know, their badges didn't didn't work to let them in the building. And that's how they were initially notified. Um, <sighs> or they they received emails at, at, you know, at, at midnight that night and they hadn't looked at their emails, which is odd to me seeing that you you knew this was, I mean, we all knew this was coming, even those of yeah. us who aren't involved directly. It was very public. So I find that you know strange, but, but I don't know of a company 
uh, a large company who doesn't immediately lock out their employees when there's a layoff happening in terms of system access and, and physical Correct. access to the building. Correct. So I don't, I, yeah, there's no win, I, I think, in these situations. I, 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 you know, in, and this is where even though uh, there's there's anger and frustration and disappointment and fear, all, all of those emotions are very real, but the, um, the, the company you know, the, the company has to, has to protect itself as well. I mean, the last thing you want, if you're Google is 12,000, you know, pissed off employees with access to all of, all of your systems. I mean, that, 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 that's, that could do more harm than good. So it's an, it, it is a no win situation. I mean, what do you think about that? Because companies are often criticized with the way they handle this. And I, we've talked about it in the past, but is there a perfect way to do it? No, it's it, 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 well, you know what, wait, the best way, not not the perfect, but the best way to do this as humanely as possible. And I, and coming from somebody who's orchestrated countless, countless of unavoidable layoffs and restructures, I'm here to tell you that at least the people I've been involved with, the biggest thing is we want to impact the actual employee as little as possible. That's what we want to do. So great example, if it's five people, easy have a conversation with each and every one of them to let them know what's happening here's 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 what's happening but if you have thousands like google does 12,000 meta 11,000 amazon 10,000 to do it in a relatively short amount of time yeah some things would have to be streamlined so sometimes it does have to be zoom i mean the company is laying people off it's not like they can afford to fly managers to lay off 12,000 people individually or task other people to do it so I let's do it as efficient and as humanely as possible. It's got to be a good balance. Well, from an HR perspective, you you know, so I, I tend to be more personal uh, with these things. Mm -hmm. It's it's why I started my own business because I, I wanted to be able to operate that way. But then there's a practicality uh, to it the, of with these twelve thousand people. And is it there a risk? This is this is an HR question, so mm -hmm. it's for you to answer more than me because I probably violate certain HR. Um, <laughs> I know I've made you cringe at times with some of the things. <laughs> yeah, that but that's I, you, I, I am you, inclined you, to want to do because it just makes sense, right? We we yeah. won't we won't talk about those things right now. But um, sometimes the you know what will get you sued is mm -hmm. not necessarily what um, most people would find logical. I'll just say, at least not mm -hmm. me. Uh, but is there a risk if if you don't control the message, if you allow managers, right? So it starts at the top. I mean, mm -hmm. this was you know, clearly a, a big decision um, and, and one that was well thought out when Google made the decision or any of these companies who, who are laying off you know, significant numbers, who, who are big organizations. And that message has to be communicated to a large number of people. And so you know, just in Google's case, there may be what, five, six or more levels between oh, yeah. the CEO, right, or the board uh, of directors and the and the staff level folks who who are getting laid off. And so, you know, it comes a telephone game thing. Do you really yeah. want first line frontline managers communicating that or is there a risk, uh, uh, you know, is there a risk associated with that for the company, someone saying the wrong thing versus a blanket email or one message, a one size fits all message in, in, in this case? It, it's, it's, I'm going to give an unpopular answer here, Pete. So he, here's my answer to it. If blanket wise, just, just holistically, if I have a manager that I cannot trust with this message, then I would ask why that manager is not on the list as well. Right. Because I would need, I, I would think somebody in a leadership position would have a, a, wouldn't have, would have the skill set to deliver this message consistently from what everybody else is doing. But I hear what you're saying. Not everybody is the same way. So there's that balance then, right? Because you don't want to risk different information to go out. Right. And then people get different messages. But at the same time, you don't want to be too heartless and just send an email, a simple email. I think you send an email with the instructions to the managers so the managers can deliver the same message to everybody. Are you allowing the managers to go off script in this in this fictitious scenario or or are you saying read this verbatim, in which case is it really personal at all? So I'm going to give you the HR legal answer and I'm going to give you the Ricky answer. Which yeah, because I'm, I'm surprised to hear you say this. <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds nice, but to say that if a manager 
Well, we'll go ahead, play it out because I, I want to, I don't okay. want to put words in your mouth. So, so, so here's the thing. So as an HR person who has to worry about, uh, you know, legal issues and sp spending a lot of money with an attorney, you need to say the exact same thing. Do not go off script. Do not go off from a legal perspective. Now I'm going to take the hat off and I'm going to put the Ricky H in HR hat on. Say what you need to say, but try to say it in your own personal way as the leader, because that leader has that direct connection with the employees. And for the employees who, if I've been working with this person for years and my time, my relationship with this person is going to end with something that somebody typed into chat GPT, put it on a Word document and print it out for me to read. <laughs> you had to sneak that in there, didn't you? I had to sneak it in there. You know your that. Favorite, 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 favorite that is my favorite thing. thing. That is what I want for Christmas next year. Um, no, but what I'm saying is, is that I there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance. And I, I'm not going to lie, uh, the times that I've had to do it, I have gone off script. I'll say it and I have gone off script. Because this is somebody I spent a lot of time with. I spend one third of my, my one third of my day with this person, right? And I want to be able to to really let them know how I feel about this, what needs to happen. So, so long as the key things are hit, I'm good. Okay. So let me separate things you said. You said, you first, you said if a, if a manager is unable to effectively communicate the, you know, the message that needs to go out, then the, you know, they should be part of the layoff too. And I know you said that somewhat, you know, tongue I, was, I was being facetious. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, okay. But, but you, 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 it's a burden you're putting on them to, or I'm uh, not a burden, but it's a, it's something that could potentially put the company at risk is my question. Or is there anything they could say that would put the company at risk? Because to your point, the manager who's having to communicate the message, and I've been you know, part of that uh, more often than I've been part of that more times than I would like, where we're the messenger in the scenario yep. of being in, in the staffing business where we get the call from a, from a client that is unexpectedly cutting someone for whatever reason, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what, whether it's, it's, it's a layoff scenario or it's just an individual where budget was cut. Um, and we're not happy it, to the, we're disappointed. We're frustrated. We're yeah. angry to have to deliver the message. And so there's a, this inherent risk of, saying something out of emotion um, it, because you do care about the person who yeah. you're delivering the message to. And as, as we've talked about on this podcast before, I, anytime I've gotten a call from the, an individual they're they're upset. It's no one, no one's happy. Yeah. And, and, and that sounds, I don't mean to sound in, you know, insincere well, by saying, okay, right. well, the person who's still employed, you know, they may not be happy, but they're still getting a paycheck. But but it's still not a pleasant scenario for anyone. Like you said, there's a there's an H in the in the HR of this uh, uh, for human. So, is there a risk though of 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 putting this in the hands of individuals who um and and saying you know knowing that they're going to go off script? There is a risk. There is. What, what it, is it, that it, risk? I don't know. I, I what, what is it really? What could someone say that? I mean. <laughs> A manager can go rogue in so many different ways, right? You know, and because it, 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 yeah, but I mean, I can't. I'm gonna. I'm about to go extreme here, right? This is extreme. I'm not saying this is gonna happen. The first thing that comes to mind, you know, if there's a, you know, a Hispanic employee that's being let go, and I'm a Hispanic manager that has to deliver this message, and I'm like, you know what? I don't agree with this. I really think they're targeting all Hispanics. We need to get some things together. So there you go. That's a, that's a great <laughs> right? example. Yeah. Um, a manager should not be having the, those conversations. But you just right? said you wanted to you wanted to allow them to. Well, here's the thing. Now, this is this is a, in a great in a great environment, unicorns and rainbows. If I put a manager, if, if I put somebody in a leadership position, I have to trust them to have those kinds of conversations. And if for some reason I have to divert my workflow for this person to somebody else because I can't trust they're going to deliver, I have to question why I have that person there. Okay, but I you in this about. case are the CEO of a of a Fortune 50 company or the mm -hmm. chief HR um, officer of a Fortune 50 company who has hundreds and hundreds of managers involved in this scenario, and you you think you should trust all of them to not be emotional? I think that's 
I think that's irres- I, I think that would be considered irresponsible at the cor- at that corporate level. As crazy as uh, as that sounds, well, I remember don't... remember my caveat: unicorns and rainbows. Because I know it's not always that way. I well, I know there are some rogue managers. So okay, so let me ask this: so what? Let's weigh out these risks, right? We are not confident enough in this special world. We're not confident in leadership enough to deliver this message. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and send this really generic email, not just to ensure everything's consistent. The risk there is what we're seeing right now, all the all the, all the stuff we're seeing on social media and on, on how people perceived it. So then you have the court of employment and labor law. Then you also have the court of public opinion. And that's so you where you have no to risk way. that. Right. Yeah, that, that, there's there's that, no win. <laughs> that's where there's no win, except one gets you sued, yeah, mm-hmm. potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah, you know, the other is just you know, I, I, look. I think there's a reason why these guys are doing it in succession. I, you yeah. know, where mm-hmm. that court of public opinion is is easier uh, to you know, to be shielded from when you, there's a lot. Of, you're, you're in company with a lot of others, right? Mm-hmm. Where you know, no one company stands out. So, so if, if one organization did, did it in a callous way and it's happened, I mean, we've seen, you know, we've heard lots of examples over the past couple of years of, you know, a CEO getting on, I can't remember the exact scenario, but it was, a, it was a, one of the tech companies where the guy you know, got on, got everyone on zoom and made some really disingenuous. That statement. was booking. Was it better.com or booking? I remember it was I, December I don't, I don't of 2021. Remember, but- but then, then bailed and left everyone feeling really bad, and they they got a lot of you know heat for it, right? Yep. Rightfully so. Except every time this comes up, I think, well, what's the right way to do it? Because I've only had to make a decision like that or be involved in a decision like that where I was able to have direct conversations with the individuals, or mm-hmm. at least a direct conversation was had, and so that is the 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 that's the preferred way to do it. But I've not had to be in a, in a situation to say, okay, I have a public company that I have a fiduciary responsibility, um, you know, to run, you know, properly. And could I make that decision in that moment? And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not in their shoes, so I, yeah. I can't say what the better thing is, but I, I know what they all do. So I'm guessing that the lawyers, you know, uh, yeah, you know, say you know we're not going to put it in the hands of individuals to 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 pass out. I can see that happening, but Pete, I'll tell you when. Um, I'll tell you one specific example when I did about four years, five years ago at Sears Home Improvement, now called Transform Core. I can talk about it now. You know, I had a team that of of HR folks that reported to me, and we we've known about this for three months. Right, because we have to be involved. We have to help with the process. Again, we work for everybody listening right now who maybe was impacted, who's upset. It, it, it's I'm not trying to make it feel better. That's not I'm I'm trying to educate so you understand what goes behind the decisions that come about. It it doesn't help. It doesn't help um, emotionally. I completely understand that, but maybe a little bit of, of understanding of what we other people go through so here's what so here's what happens three months prior we have to go ahead and start thinking about you know how to cut payroll we never start with anybody that has a position ever we always start with empty positions first and work our way up now when i've done this over at uh seo some improvement i wanted to make sure every single person impacted somebody spoke with them somebody had a conversation with them then the paperwork comes out so let me tell you, I had to fly some people to uh, to California. I had to fly some people over to Minnesota and some people over to to Texas, HR people to go there and, and make sure all the managers have everything they need to have these conversations leading with emotion and empathy first. It worked beautifully. Now, that was just 4,000 employees, right? Could you imagine like 10, 15, 30,000? That, that, that's when I, I'm thinking I understand if we go the zoom routes, uh, but I don't know about an email. So, yeah, I don't, I, I, you know, this is perhaps a bad time to to say what I'm going to say, but I'll do it anyway, is this is the finding careers in podcast. And we are, um, it, we are part of, we do, we do this podcast in support of zengig.com that uh, exists to help people find, you know, their, their you know, career Zen, so to speak. And, I don't know that that's, you know, when, when you think of a big company being who is at any given time, you as an employee of a large company like that, 
your risk of this scenario, your fate, your your financial well being in many cases, your professional um, success is tied to decisions like this. And Correct. this is why I think the freelance market is is such a um, you know better way to operate because it's I don't as as I go down this path further and spend more time thinking about it, I often question why we have ended up in the situation where someone's um, you know financial uh, freedom and and well-being mm-hmm. and 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 you know, everything that's tied to that um, or that goes with that is so tied to an employer. And I don't like it, right? I, 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 you know, no one likes it, but I, I think there's a better way. Um, and so I don't want to talk too much about that right now because that's not going to help a lot of people in the moment. You know, to make a decision to be a solopreneur, for example, or a freelancer. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you've heard the new solopreneur phrase. That's that's been used a lot lately. That's a new one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It effectively yeah. is a way of a fancy way to describe uh, you know taking a, an approach um, to freelance, but. I don't know that you should make those decisions on the fly, you know, if, if you need a paycheck or you need to pay rent. Yeah. But I think everyone you know, going through this right now, the hundreds of thousands who've been laid off recently should you know, do what you have to do in the moment, yep. but take the steps to not put yourself in this situation, um, you know, going, going forward uh, because as we see on LinkedIn right now, for those of us who who spend you know, time on it, my feed, I don't know about yours, has been littered with with people who are um who have been impacted, many of yeah. them angry, frustrated, upset, sharing those things publicly. So we 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 should talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um but um a lot of a lot of stories that are hard to read right now. And um you know, I, I, I'd rather avoid the problem than solve it. And, and, you know, as an, you know, for me and and what I'd want to recommend to others. So that's why we're going to continue to promote the world of freelance. You, you have chat GPT. I have, um, you know, the freelance, um, you know, way of, of, of operating to really mm-hmm. control your own professional fate, uh, more, more so than anything else. And so just everything that's happened over the past few months, just, just reiterates my, um, so my feelings. I got a quick question for you. It, it, it's it's got to do with this, but it will transition into what we're, what we are going to talk about. Now that you see this happening, it, it, it's that snowball effect. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. People are going to start realize. I I'm I'm going to anticipate people are going to start realizing exactly what you just said. They're going to realize, man, I can easily go on Uber Eats and Uber and Lyft and Instacart and all these different things. How far, how, how much, how, how much of a, uh, of a wave are we going to see of 1089 workers in the next three years? I think we're going to see a huge wave and people who employ W-2s, they have to pay attention to that, don't you think? So, yeah, uh, well, so there's so many, it's multifaceted with that. And I'm, and yeah. I'm not necessarily talking about going to work for, you know, get a side gig or, or go if you are a software developer or you're a, um, you know, a, a, a digital marketing professional, I, I'm not going to work as an Uber driver is a different route. I'm not yep. talking about that. Um, now yeah. again, if, if, you know, for those people who, um, are full-time in those roles, it seem to be a pretty good, pretty good well, deal too. You. I mean, I love well, it. I, I, I yeah. love that you have the freedom to, um, to choose your schedule to work when you want mm-hmm. to. I mean, I, I, I'm, Every time I'm in an Uber, um, I, I you know, talk to the driver as much as I can, and I love the stories. They're all they all come from such a different place in terms of how they came to make that decision, and the ones that do it full time seem pretty happy to me. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm a fan of that. But what I'm specifically referring to in this case is someone who says, "Well, I'm not going to. I could I could be an employee and and be have my my um, my financial well being tied to." the whims of this organization, right. Or, or success uh, of this organization and the thousands of people or hundreds of people who work for it, if they work for a big company um, or I can, I can you know, take control of my own destiny and work as a consultant, as a freelancer um, and choose who I work for, when I work for them, how much I work for, you know, all the things that 
are restrictive working for a big company go mm -hmm. away when you work as a freelancer. And um, again, that's its own episode. It's its own series, yep. but it is um, it's, it's just you know, more, it strengthens my conviction that it's a better way to work. Yep. I agree because I'm experiencing it right now. It, 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 to me, it is a, it really is a better way to work. And I'm an advocate now where before I'm like, yeah, I want to each his own, but now I'm more of an advocate than I were, than I was before. But let's say I wasn't Pete. Let's say I wasn't. Let's say all I wanted to do is work. I wanted to work for a company. I don't want to deal with a solopreneur headaches and I want to work for another organization. And I just got laid off. I'm mad. I'm upset. And I am, I got my phone in hand, TikTok recording how upset I am about this organization that I'm stealing things on the way out. You want to, <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want to. Get them back. Uh, you want to. I want to get some, them back. Some, some vengeance. Um, I dedicated five years of my life to this organization, and now they laid me off with an email, and I'm really upset, and I want the whole world to know about it. That happens, uh, and, yeah. and it's happening right now. Yeah. And well, let, let's just say, let me just say this, and then we'll 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 focus on on your question. Uh, if if you're if if you're content with the risk and and happy you know, to not have those headaches that you just referred to. By all means, the freelancing is not for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. it, there, are, it, there are pros and cons of every decision. So just know that. Um, and as I've often said, even though I started my own business and, and quit my job to do it um, over 17 years ago now, it was only because I could, I wasn't content and happy. Uh, you know, if I had been, I wouldn't have. I, 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 I there were reasons I did it and, it, and it wasn't. But, but man, there's a lot of there's a lot of pluses too, to, to letting someone else worry about, um, everything, right. Yeah, Instead of just everybody's worrying different. about your, yeah, yeah. your, your, you're doing your job to the best of your ability. I, so that, that is a whole different conversation, yeah. but, um, yeah. So, so what we've seen, each of us have seen, um, uh, on LinkedIn in particular, some people expressing, um, anger directed mm -hmm. at their former employee and employer. That's a, that's, don't do it. Right. I think that's the short I mean, we can there. Podcast over. <laughs> Let's move on. No, don't do it. it, it, it yeah. So the why you shouldn't do it, I think, is is the relevant part. Um, and it's because it will follow you. It will linger. We've mm -hmm. spoken a lot about quiet quitting, you know, recently. And listen, this is also a pretend potentially an unpopular statement, but if there was a list of people getting laid off, who do you think was was at the top of the list? The ones who were doing the bare minimum at their job. If mm. if, if there you know, if there were ten people in the same role, the ones who were you know doing doing you know, the best that they could in in every scenario. Yeah, I think we know the answer to that. So yep. your actions you know, will will follow you, and your words will follow you, especially if they're made public um, on on a social media channel. So. Let me say this, um, because yes, it, it, it's my, the end result is going to be, don't do that. It, it is, it's, that does not help you or anybody at all. Now, should you be angry? I'm not one to say that if, if, if you should or you shouldn't, but if you feel angry, if you feel that needs to happen, look, I, I understand I've been laid off before and I know how it feels. And I know that this, a a a big wave of emotions and it's okay for you to experience them. Do what you need to do to reflect, right? Because as a human being, you got to filter those emotions, but please do not let those emotions get the best of you. And because if you, your emotions will go away at some point in a day or so, or a week or so, or a month, everybody's different. You're, you're going to feel better about your situation. And who knows, sometimes people may see this as a, as the wake up call, they needed to do what they're really passionate about. Those emotions will go away. But if you capture those emotions on video, that raw emotion is going to be there tomorrow, next year, 20 years from now, when you're looking to get that job, and you've forgotten about this, somebody is going to bring that video up, just don't document. It. It's just oh, not man. gonna help you. Did, did yeah. you see? I mean, this is off topic a little bit, yeah. but it's it's also a great case in point. Did you see the 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 Pfizer video that supposedly the supposed Pfizer research uh, director video I that saw that. on Twitter uh, over the last <laughs> yeah. couple of days? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. No, that no, was no, interesting. Yeah, no. <laughs> Of course, we have no way to know what's staged or, or not, yeah. or how real it was. Or, yeah, but. But if it, if it, if it, if it's real, 
you know, here's a guy who who didn't even know he was being recorded and was saying things about, you know, that were, if, if, if they were, if, again, if it was any of it was real, it, would have, it should have been assumed it was highly uh, confidential and not to be repeated outside. And, you know, the, the, that's all it takes, right? Is, is some, because if you, if you say it or do it, assume it's going to be captured, especially, yep. well, if you, you especially these maybe days. you shouldn't assume that someone's tape you know, secretly recording you. That's its own, <laughs> its own thing. But um, that's a trust breach there. So, yeah. To say the least, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's just a mess. So who, who knows? <laughs> Again, I, I don't know if it's real. Well, but no, wait, that's a good point, Pete. That's a good point. Because although that, the first part of it is not what we're talking about, now that he knows that video is public, he has to answer to that for the rest of his career. So somebody's going to bring that up, right? Now, obviously, he didn't have any play in that. We do. So for everybody out there that's, you know, recording their emotions, that's going to come back later on. Just do not, and this is what the lawyers call it, digitally preserve. Do not digitally preserve that emotion for it to be used against you later on. That's a, um, I, I, I didn't know that yeah. phrase, but that's a great. It's a great. I mean, that yeah. describes it perfectly, right? Yeah. yeah. So because someone is going to digitally preserve it on your behalf, that's yeah. what that's what we know will be will will happen. And um, the you know, when when you're on LinkedIn, uh, you you it's okay to express that you're disappointed. It's okay to express that you're um, you, you're 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 anxious and or eager to to find your next role and that you're highly motivated and that, um, you know, that those things are, those things are mm-hmm. fine uh, to do. And, and, the, and, and, you know, LinkedIn is an interesting place. You, you have different pers- you have people with different perspectives on, it. I think that's probably the thing we should t- focus on in this context, because if, if someone's going on Twitter or, or, or TikTok and, and expressing it, there's not going to be any upside to you. Probably no, you, no one's getting hired because they make a TikTok video. And of course there's exceptions, weird ones mm-hmm. out there that any today, anything, anyone can get hired for anything and it could go viral and, and all that. I mean, of course, all those opportunities exist. What we're talking about is the, the, va- for the vast majority of cases, you no, know, you, you can't make a TikTok video saying you need a job and expect to get one, right? That would not be the path that we would recommend. <laughs> Correct. LinkedIn is really the social channel um, that exists for these things. And, and, you know, in the not too distant past, LinkedIn was really a place where you didn't see personal uh, information shared. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's evolved. I think probably around the time COVID hit, I don't know if one had anything to do with the other, but um, I don't know what your thought is on that, but we've seen it become, you know, much more personal in nature over the past few years. I have, I have, I, I've, which I'm okay with uh, for LinkedIn, but when you start going from professional, personal, professional Facebook, that's when that turns me off. <laughs> right. Well, where, where do you draw that line? Right. Do you, do you, you know, do you put you know, cat videos, you know, nope. for example, they hit on Facebook. <laughs> I, you wouldn't have seen those on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, now it's commonplace or, you know, people celebrating uh, milestones in their life, personal things, you know, tragedies, successes, um, you know, milestones, uh, anniversaries, graduations. I mean, there are a lot of, it's, it's common now, somewhat common. I don't know that people will use it to pull people into their personal lives. And I, 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 here's what I know. It, it, gets them attention. It does. And it's, they, they're succeeding in their goal of being noticed. Right. And I guess if your goal is to be noticed that the question is why you want to be noticed, do you want it to be noticed because you had that success? Do you want to be noticed because you just finished this project? Do you want to be noticed because you're always arguing with people online? How do you want to be noticed? And in LinkedIn, there's only one answer to that. You want to be noticed professionally. You want to people to see who you are professionally. And I'm starting to see that in LinkedIn, that's that's starting to be chipped away. It's not going to go away any, any, anytime soon, but I agree with you. It's starting to become less professional, more humanistic. And I want it to stop there, to be honest. But, but I don't think it's going to. Un- unfortunately, you are correct. Well, I mean, <laughs> I well, why, why do you say it's unfortunate? Because here's the thing. 
it, it's if we if this continues, right? Because the more the more the more younger generation goes online, the more they want to share because that's how that's how they know how to express themselves. You and I express ourselves differently because we we remember an era when this technology didn't exist. They don't know an era with this technology did not exist. So they grow up with it. So that's going to keep happening. So I'm thinking what's going to end up happening in about 10 years, we're not going to be able to distinguish LinkedIn from Facebook. I, Facebook I now agree. is trying to get in the, the the job game and sales. There's going to be a point. They're going to be one and the same. And, and that's why I'm like, to me, it's unfortunate because LinkedIn was a, a place where you don't have to filter all the other stuff to get the information of the people you're looking for. So here, here's my take on it as a, you know, yeah. with, as a, with a recruiter mindset. And it's also a tale of caution perhaps for mm -hmm. anyone who, um, who may need LinkedIn to, to promote themselves for, for a job or, or uh, you know, their business, whatever it might be. What people post tells you who they are and it, and it speaks to what they value. It speaks to how they approach business and it speaks to their decision-making good or bad. So if as a, as a, as a recruiter, I, I want all of that information, right? Because yes. if you're, if you're putting something out there, I get it. That is, is showing the world, you're not the best decision maker in terms of, of, of uh, you know, what you should hold back on and what you should make public. Well, then that's who you are. And, and, and from a background standpoint and who you are is going to translate over into what kind of mm -hmm. employee you are. And so again, and as a recruiter, if I see that someone has, um, has bashed their former employer, well, I'm going to assume that they'll do it again. Right. Yep. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but it's on me to look at what someone's done in the past and, and assess that and decide whether they're going to be a good employee uh, for our client. And so that's why we're talking about this now, as much as anything else is to say, you shouldn't do that. I, like you, like it's going to be used against you, whether yeah. you think it should be or not. And it's subtle. You know, you'll never know. You'll just, you just won't get the call. So, um, yeah, you know, but, but it, but I like, but on the other hand, I go, I want to know who people are, right. I want to see sense. who, who they are. And, and, and in some scenarios, uh, you could make a case that, Hey, people who are very personal, engaging on, on that, there's roles that are going to be good for them mm -hmm. and it may help them get a job. So it's, um, it's, 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 it's interesting because it's, it's, it's evolving as we speak. Right. Yeah. And, and, ev and everyone sort of has their own unique view. I mean, if you see a personal post you, you know, that, that goes viral at any degree, you'll see half the, I'm making this up of course, but it seems like half the people are saying this LinkedIn is not a place for this. And the other half argue <laughs> and say LinkedIn is a place for whatever we want it to be. And so, but again, Meanwhile, there's 5,000 comments, <laughs> all of these things are data points to tell you who someone is and how they view things. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause I've seen those too. Cause I'm like, wow, these, these comments are in the four digits. <laughs> Right. That's right. Are so, you going to be, are you someone who will argue publicly? Right. And as an, in, as an employee employer, you have to consider, do, do I want that, that, that person? I, I, I find hmm. that I'm, I'm not surprised because I'm used to it now, but I find it curious how willing people are to argue publicly on social media. Um, uh, whether it's Facebook or, or LinkedIn yeah. and, and, I, I, you know, it's, there's a, um, <laughs> there's a Facebook group for my local community. It's large. You're probably part mm -hmm. of it too, even though you don't live on my part of town. Um, and, you see me on there? <laughs> and, 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 and people will get into fights regularly with, with strangers about innocuous things. I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I know who they are. Once yeah. I see you, I go, okay. Uh... <laughs> and if you did it to them, you'll do it to me. Right. And if you bash your employer publicly, well, you're going to, you're going to bash the next one. That's yeah. why it's a bad idea. So, it, so I, I see your point because I was looking at it from the employee's perspective, the candidate's perspective, but you're right. From a recruiter's perspective, I want to know who I'm trusting to bring into this organization, into this circle. I'd rather see you right now. Now with these videos, so let's stick on LinkedIn for a second with these videos 
yes, don't do anything negative. But this is a double-edged sword. You can also do something positive to help you after a layoff. Whatever. Now, after you've done your reflection and you've got all your emotions out the way and you're a little bit more focused, now it's time to get noticed on LinkedIn. So use that video to put one minute, a 90 second, 90 second video on LinkedIn about anything you are passionate about. Just start talking about anything you're passionate about. Start tagging people. Let people know you're looking. Extend your network. Use that to your advantage. That will never hurt you. <laughs> that now, wait a minute. Will wait help a minute. You. I want to yeah. make sure you're not uh, being inconsistent here. When you say anything you're passionate about, if you're passionate about cats, are you no. suggesting someone <laughs> someone make that video? Okay. Thank you for checking me. I appreciate it. Whatever you're passionate about when it comes to your career, right? So I'm passionate about training and development. I'm passionate about um, the employee experience. So I want to do videos on that and help people out. And if I show my passion, that's going to resonate with somebody. My passion for cats or lack thereof, I saved that for Facebook. That's okay. that. Yeah, that doesn't. You see, you know, my passion for steaks and grilling on Facebook. Right. I don't put any of that on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, and, and, and so, but do you think that, are you in the camp of that's not what LinkedIn is for? Is that, are you, are you in that camp? If wait for which part for me, for, for the personal, it, for sharing the personal stuff. I, um, to a point. To a point, if if you're sh if you're showing me your human side professionally, I'm okay with that because I don't want to see you as a number. I want to see you as Bob, as Mike, as Susan, who loves or hate the Jaguars, whatever. But I I that I still want to see. But your opinions on anything religious, political that has got nothing to do with work, I don't want to see that on LinkedIn. A cat, dog, and I don't want to see that on LinkedIn. No. Okay. So you're, yeah. you're, 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 in I draw the that line it, there. you're in the keep it business camp. Yeah. Keep it, keep it business with a little human touch, but don't go too far with it. Okay. But I guess the, 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 the point is everyone has their own unique you know, way of defining mm -hmm. that and, and perceiving it, but regardless, don't be negative. Right. I think we can, everyone yes. should agree on that. And it happens a lot. And uh, I saw a post, uh, I think even yesterday that I thought was 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 really good and it, it was shared a lot and it seemed to get a lot of attention mm -hmm. it said look you're you're emotional you're you're upset fine make two posts say say you you make that one but then flip flip it yes and, did you see this yes and and, and yeah. then focus on here's what i need here's what i want here's what i'm looking for here's the value i i can bring to the next organization so get get that behind you if you must right your, your emotions, but then focus on, on, on getting, you know, your next opportunity. And I thought that was, that was really good. Right. But I mean, I, because it makes sense. It, it, it's, it's don't ignore the human side. Don't ignore the emotion. Don't bottle that up. You know, it's because if you get that new job, you don't want it to explode there. Right. It, it's explode, have it explode at home in the same, in, in a safe space where everybody's safe that you get to do what you need to do. But yeah, I saw that ironically enough, I saw that on LinkedIn. Yeah, no, that's where it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so good. So someone, yeah. someone put out a good message. So, and, yeah. and and what's what's neat right now, and 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 I think we've once again we always get to the point where like I think we've hit this from every angle, right? <laughs> but that you know people are helping each other. That that's what even yeah. people who are looking for jobs you see helping others out there. Um, it's it's the community effect is has been you know a really cool thing to see while there's so many. You know, bad stories going out there that others are are really helping. Um, mm. You know, people who they don't know and and strangers, and you know, for no reason other than that they want to, and it's the right thing to do. So I think that's um, you know been a real positive of this otherwise really really uh, gloomy situation. And and then also as a reminder, the the market is still historically good. Like that's we don't know what the future holds, and we're yeah we have some um, some concerns about about. You know, the trend, but right now it's still good. So don't get too distracted by the bad that's happened. Folk, look, look forward and and make a plan. You know, if you need to take twenty four hours to to, to 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 get it out of you, know, get get the frustration and disappointment out of the way, do it. But then you got to look forward as quickly as possible because lingering on 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 what just happened um, isn't going to help solve the problem. I that's think right. that's the message I would want to deliver more than anything else.
and I, and I cannot, I, it's, you said it perfectly. It, it's um just, just, it, it's, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. That same drive that got you that job before it, it'll get it for you again. So you, you I, Except I, for I've the Pfizer there. guy, it might not be okay. You won't know. That's not, <laughs> that's not good <laughs> for real. Okay I'm guy. hoping he's an actor. It was, yeah. He's going to be, because otherwise yeah, that's all that too. No, but for everybody okay. else, it's going to be okay. I know it doesn't feel like it. Let go through those emotions and trust me, you're going to be all right. Now, that said, Pete, um, I think this is a good idea to put this out there. Um, would you be okay in taking questions or maybe comments later on from somebody who's just going through those and experiencing those and maybe come on the show live and talk to us? Absolutely. Would you be open to that? Yeah, of course. All right. All right. So find us at Zen. Which email can they email us? Which email? Um, yeah. What they can email us at uh, questions at zengig.com. Questions at zengig.com. How to make sure I get that right. So go ahead and email us. And if you want to appear, we can even do those, one of those uh, um, uh, uh, confidential interviews they do on TV. We'll have the dark room. We'll disguise your voice. <laughs> but we would love to hear from you because we want to see how you experience this and how we can help you live on the air. So questions at zengig.com. Great. Ricky, anything else? Any, any big plans for the weekend? Oh, oh, you know what today is. It's Friday. So as soon as I'm done here, I got one more meeting. Then I'm going to go to Publix. I'm going to give you a nice ribeye steak. And guess what I'm going to do with that steak there, Pete? I, I would I would assume you're going to eat it eventually. Uh, well, well, eventually, because I'm going to throw that bad boy on the grill with some fixings, and you're going to get an endless supplies of pictures of it later on tonight. Perfect. Well, I, I <laughs> you're like, yay. I, 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 I look forward to that. Um, awesome. So great. All right, Ricky. Well, thanks so much for again today. Uh, we uh, appreciate your your insight as always. And if anyone out there has questions for us, uh, you know, we really do want to hear from you and yes. we will address them. I think we have some piling up. And so a Q&A is probably due maybe as soon as next week. So stay tuned for that too and, and drive safe. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.